Hello there, and welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, I'll be upcycling a couple of paintings, thereby giving them a new sci-fi fantasy flair. But before we get started, if you love art, then make sure you look at the rest of the lessons in the TV category at our website at www.montmart.net. We've also got our art club, the Creative Connection, and our Facebook Connected too. And we'd love to meet you. So let's get into it and upcycle. Well, I bought this great old painting from my local thrift shop for $10. It features a lovely traditional bush scene and I think a vintage style steampunk giant robot would really complement it in a preposterous sort of way. The first step is to print out the accompanying PDF and select the robot image. Flip it over and shade the backside of the image with a pastel. If you're going to paint on a light background, use black and use white if the painting is dark. Then flip it back over, tape it down and using a ballpoint pen, retrace the image. Next, take a metallic marker and redefine the transferred outline. I'm using a metallic marker in this case because I want the glimmering outline to be a feature, but one could use a ballpoint. Once the outline is completed, I pull out the paint. For this project, I'm using the 12-piece oil paint set and a gallery series brush set. All the brushes are fine in this pack. The process here is to choose the light source direction and lay the black on the opposing side of that light source. You will have to pay close attention to the direction of the light in the original painting or your robot won't integrate as well. Once the black is in, lay the white onto the side closest to the light source. Try to avoid contamination by using a brush for black and a brush for white. Once the two tones are in, use a clean brush to blend them into a smooth transition. And that is essentially the technique to follow for the whole robot. Create each element one at a time and think in terms of cylinders and spheres. Think also about where your hand will lie. Move from left to right if you are right-handed and vice versa if you're a lefty. Another little tip is to use the black sparingly as it is such a strong tone, it will totally overpower the white if you use too much and it's much easier to darken an area than to relighten it. If this does happen, wrap a paper towel around the end of the brush, remove the offending tone and re-add white and re-blend. Creating a project like this reiterates the importance of shading shapes. You know, the exercises that your art teacher got you to do at high school? Any recessed areas will show as darker. The legs are tubular and one gets a more dramatic look to the work if the high key tones are very light and the low key tones very dark. Smooth transitional blending is the key to getting a good result. On blending, I find soft dabbing most efficient and it leaves a pleasing slightly motley look to the surface. As one moves to the foot, it is thought of in terms of flat panels and edges. Flat panels are a single tone and that tone depends on how much light it is receiving. If you took a cube outside in the sun, the top side would be almost pure white. The front side a little darker and the sides slightly darker and the back side the darkest. Even if you wanted to create your robot in a different colour, this shading theory would still work regardless. One thing I haven't touched on yet is medium. Because we are painting this project a la primer, that is in one coat, the underlying coat will be visible if the top coat is too translucent. So if your paint is thick and you need to increase the flow rate, just use minimal medium. I like to just dip the tip of the brush into that medium. The tail is fairly fiddly, but again light and dark is blended in between to suggest shape. You could leave the tail out if you wanted to. I wouldn't mind. Come to think of it, why would a giant steampunk powered robot need a tail anyway? Other than aesthetic fabulousness, of course. To suggest smoke, I just scumble on some black paint with a very dry brush. The trick to creating smoke is to charge the brush and wipe off as much as you can, then create small circular movements. Fade the coat as you move away from the source. 
Lastly, I give him a little fire in the belly with a little red and blend in a touch of yellow. This next project I'm upcycling is one of an old landscape painting I did of the Blue Mountains. Incidentally, if you'd like a look at the lesson for this, I've attached a link here. But this painting, I'm going to embellish with a warrior princess riding a dragon. And whereas the other project was metal technology, this is old world fantasy. So let's get into it. As was the case with the previous lesson, the first step is to take a printout of the image and shade the back side, in this case pencil. Once the shading is done, position the outline onto the appropriate position. You then take out your trusty biro and retrace the outline. I use an old blue biro so I can see where I've drawn. Take care that you don't forget any bits and ensure that the page doesn't move. Then take a black biro and reinforce the pencil mark. Biro is actually very compatible with oil paint as it is usually solvent based and is considered quite permanent. A small proportion of biros are water based but you will recognise straight away as they won't mark the surface. The graphite is just sitting on the surface so the nib will mark the surface through the powder. Once it's down, take a damp tissue and remove any excess powder. For the painting now, start with the body and create a skin tone. The PDF lesson plan has all of the ratios of colour to use to create these tones. To paint the armour I use straight titanium white and mix black with this and blend it in. Then I create a brown and paint in the saddle. Again it is important to take the light source into account. In this case the light is behind my dragon. So the rear of the unit accepts all of the light. Oil paint is very easy to blend. And in this part of the project, we lay in the mid-tone and then lighten and darken as we see fit. While I have my brown, I paint in the strap. The mid-tone for the dragon is straight scarlet. The PDF will outline where to lay it in, but it is essentially the same process of laying in the appropriate tones and softly blending them together. This shape is obviously a lot more organic and less conventionally shaped. To create a darker red, one mixes it with green to cleanly darken it. Then paint it into the underside of the dragon. Lay the paint right up to the adjacent tone and ensure there is no cross-contamination of paint. The head is quite detailed, so I have left a fair bit of footage in. But the technique is still quite understandable. If it is happening a little fast, you can always slow down the footage. This can be done in the settings tab in speed. Due to the fine detail, I use the finest brush in the set to do this work. Now we move on to our lightest tone. This is vermilion with a little yellow added. And this is laid onto the top side of our dragon. Essentially all the bits that have not been coloured yet. As this is the lightest tone, it is the most susceptible to contamination. So just take your time. And once this is all laid in, we can start the fun part, the blending of all the colours. I love this because it all comes together. Get into the habit of wiping any excess paint off your brush and be aware if you wash out your brush, it will remove paint rather than blend it. Keep the transition subtle, but your detail edges sharp. Once the dragon is all blended, use a clean brush to lay the highlights on the very top points of the creature. Use pure titanium white to do this. I want to suggest an ultra thin look to the wing webbing. So I lay a thin line on the inside edge and then drag the colour out, thinning as I go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned and remember to always keep on creating.